This is PCR Foundations. So let's talk a little bit about foundations for older buildings in New York City. Uh, first of all, the major goal of the foundation, yes, it does things like privacy and water management to keep stormwater out, etc. But the main goal is for load, is to support our structure. So I'm here in an old New York City building. If you see the close-up of this, you see how imperfect it is. This is a rubble stone foundation wall. And it's it literally as sexy as it sounds. It's stone, it's big rocks. And between the big rocks, we put a mortar or a glue that is pliable or workable. And once it hardens, it gives you a masonry wall basically, which is stone with that glue between. This is very typical of an old pre-World War II building in New York City. And what happens is for most of our walls today, if we build a one foot wall, we put a two foot footing below meaning that the wall brings the load down the wall and to the footing. Why is the footing thicker or wider than the wall? And it's the same concept of a snowshoe or a ski. You're wearing ski boots on snow, you slip down. But you put skis on, you don't. Why? Well, the reason is you're no less heavy. In fact, you're a little heavier with the skis, but the skis spread the load out. So that's what's going to happen when you have a traditional or typical foundation wall. Now, a lot of these older walls, the wall itself will actually taper or be fatter from the top to the bottom. So in itself, it's a wall end footing. But the main thing is we're looking at a rubble stone foundation wall. We're gonna look at condition. We're gonna note age. We're gonna look for deterioration. A lot of times if there's a lot of moisture in here, you got a boiler down here, a water heater, we're gonna see flaking of that stones are gonna to wanna to protect that with a, a, a waterproofing. We also can see brick. Now brick is typically not used as a foundation wall today or even a bearing wall today, but back in the day they used it as a bearing wall. So this could be a bearing wall and you can see the outline of the brick as well as this foundation wall. Well, what do we usually use today? Well, usually we'll use a poured in place concrete and then if we're gonna build walls down here to say separate an electric room, we'll use CMU, concrete masonry unit. Now this is called an eight inch concrete masonry unit wall because the height from here to here is eight inches, including the glue. So we know when we're doing it dimensionally, an eight inch wall is eight inch high. So we've got a mix down here of both rubble stone brick, and CMU. Here we look at a cellar slab. This is actually not structural. This is just to support me standing on it, or equipment, etc. But if I were to chop a hole right there in this wood, in this concrete, the building's not going there. Because this is a supporting wall, and then at the other side, we'd have a supporting wall. So I know that I'm gonna bear side wall to side wall in most buildings in New York City, and on the second floor and above, it's gonna be wood. But the first floor support is very often gonna be this. Now what this is, is you could see the arching system, okay? It's a steel purlin and another steel purlin, and between it is a brick arch. You can note that it's built like an arch. It's a genius physical structure in arch because as you load it, it actually gets stronger. So a lot of first floors were built this way, steel purlin, steel purlin and an arch. And that was for not only the load of the first floor, but also a fire rating or fire resistance. So I know that this steel is bearing on this wall. So this wall is going to be load bearing. And then that means that the other side walls are gonna be load bearing. Uh, most of the time you see these purlins five feet spread. I've seen buildings in Brooklyn that'll be spread by the exact dimension of half a beer barrel because they'd actually use beer barrels to set them as a form to put the bricks above. And I've actually seen beer barrels still in place, which is kind of amazing. And this was beer barrels in a place like Brooklyn before refrigeration. You got your beer close or you didn't get beer. Refrigeration kind of changed all that. Lastly down here, we have our walls. We talked a little about our arch and our first floor system, and we have our cellar slab. So overall, we're gonna look at condition, we're gonna look at age, 
I can see here some deterioration. So what we wanna do is we wanna scrape the loose stuff, paint a waterproofing or a dry lock or some sort of product like that, and it'll give us an additional life for the foundation wall. But the good news is, the way that they used to build these buildings is that a structural fa failure is extremely rare. And just to point out how thick they built them, you could see the thickness of this wall here. Okay, here's my pen. That shows you how thick this thing is. That's a load-bearing wall. That's supported on it. And we need to make an opening for a door or a window. And then above it, we put a lintel or a header to pick up that load. But that just shows you the thickness. Usually it would be five or six bricks thick. See, they closed this one up, which went to the building next door. Same with this one. See the arch system, so more of the same. All right, that's it for foundations and slab uh, in the cellar. Stay tuned for more videos. Thanks for watching.